Do you constantly find yourself reaching for a cigarette or your phone or that 10th cup of coffee and just feel totally out of control about it? I'm Hannah Mason, and in today's Spark, we're going to explore reconsidering your drug of choice. So I'm going to be honest here and tell you that my drug of choice is busyness or productivity. Not exactly sure which. I do know that my itching for constant productivity often ends up leading me to do busy work. You know that teacher you had in school who'd give you homework and then you'd come and you'd sit and do it and spend like an hour doing this assignment that just felt totally ridiculous and definitely didn't help you learn the material, but somehow kept you really busy? So sometimes to myself, I'm that teacher. I give myself these assignments that keep me really busy but don't actually lead me in the path where I want to go and definitely don't feel nourishing and comforting and bring me closer to the people I love the most. And I finally got to a peak of frustration with this addiction when I realized that I wasn't just judging myself and assessing literally like every hour of the day, I'd be like, okay, am I doing enough of this? Am I doing enough of that? How productive have I been? I start like listing off all the things I accomplished, like constantly like a drill sergeant. It wasn't just me I was doing this to, it was to the rest of my family. And I was constantly questioning whether they were accomplishing enough in each day, and whether they were using every single minute of the day to a level of productivity, not based on these standards, not based on what was important to them, but based on what was important to me. And you know what? It drove them bonkers. So frustrating. And um, the other thing that was like really frustrating about it was that I noticed that in constantly trying to keep busy, it creates like, you can even see my hands, like this is what the inside of me feels like when I'm in a productivity state. I feel like a hamster running in a wheel and my heart races and there's so much tension. And when I'm in that place, I can't think clearly. And my creativity just really gets bland and and weak. And it makes it really hard for me to have clarity of purpose really knowing where it is that I want to go and being able to clarify what are the steps I need to take to get there. The other thing that becomes really difficult is in being able to just be present in the moment and ask myself what I need right now. So it could be that I need rest or I need play or I need food or I need something nourishing. And a lot of times I fill every single one of those needs for play or rest or food with busyness. But busyness isn't nourishing at least not for me. And so when I like came to that real clarity and that real pain around being so constantly busy that I was hurting the people I love the most and simultaneously like leaving myself on empty and like running with no gas, I realized I had to do something and I had to create some sort of a shift. And um, that being said, I, I did nothing. <laughs> I just like felt the pain of it, but didn't actually move forward until Dave said, you've been saying for so long that you want to create change, but you really need to create the space for that to happen. And I know the the cure for you, the tool for you, the thing that's going to help you the most is meditation because what you need is bandwidth. And it was something that I knew, but As some of you have heard before, I was absolutely petrified of meditation. What do you mean? Like sitting still and doing nothing? That's like, oh, to somebody who's trying to be productive. It's so incredibly painful. And on top of that, it was like boring as can be. And and then it was like, what was I going to see? So I used to have this thing as a child and it went way into adulthood that whenever I closed my eyes and got still, I saw really, really scary images and lots of monsters from a trauma experience I had as a kid. And so on top of that, I was scared of that. There was just so much fear around meditation. So I did everything in my power to put it off and put it off and put it off. And then uh, a little over a year ago, I made a promise to myself. I said, next time there's a pre-Passover meditation retreat, I'm going to go. And this year's pre-Passover meditation retreat with Or Halev came up. And I was like, no, 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 I don't have to go. And you know what my husband Dave, my wonderful, wonderful husband Dave did. He said, I'm kicking you out. You're going. You have to go. Go. And meanwhile, he created this awesome tool that has worked really, really well in his relationship with our son, Ari Lev. And that tool is 
when Ima leaves town, when Hana leaves town, pizza night every night. And so my son was like really excited for me to go. He's like, go, go, go. We'll have pizza. We'll see movies. It'll be great. Mind you, it's a super healthy sourdough vegan pizza, but nonetheless, very, very excited. So, so I go on this meditation retreat and for the first time in my life, sit in the quiet, quiet and sit in the stillness. And my mind, nonetheless, wants to be busy. Busy, 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 busy. And starts thinking about this and thinking about that. I was even thinking about matches I could make between the other people in the room. I was like looking at the single people saying, oh, would this person go with this person? And then I was just like, oh, shut up, right? So much noise. But I found for the first time the stillness. And in that stillness, I found the most beautiful place. So for me, one of my sweetest, most delicious remedies for this like obsession with busyness has actually been to do the most unbusy thing I could ever imagine doing, and that's sitting and doing nothing. And for some of us, that might work really well, but the, the, the tool I like actually the most for working on this like struggle we have for reaching for one addiction after the other is just as you find yourself, let's say reaching for a cigarette, just as you find yourself reaching for it, if you can just pause and do what Viktor Frankl says, is like in that pause, in that moment between stimulus and response, that's where you have responsibility. That's where you're able to respond. So if in that moment you could just pause and slow everything down and ask yourself the question, what am I believing right now that's making me behave this way? If you could just ask that question, it's very possible that in that moment you're believing something not so kind about yourself or about the world, or you're believing something that's just frankly not true. And an untrue feeling creates stress in our bodies. And oftentimes we try to relieve stress through addiction. So if you can answer that question, that's one tool that has helped me a lot that I want to offer you. Another tool I actually learned from Danny Cohen at the Orha Lev Meditation Retreat. Hey, Danny, thanks for this amazing tool. And he says, um, and this is actually a tool that comes from nonviolent communication. In nonviolent communication, oftentimes what we're searching for is in recognizing that our behaviors and our beliefs or our emotions are really reactions to needs that we have that aren't getting met. So if we behave in a way that feels like negative or mean, oftentimes really there's something inside that's searching for fulfillment. And if we're able to identify that need, then we can ask the question, what is it that I need right now? So if I'm reaching for a cigarette, I could say, what, am, what is it that I need right now? And then I can ask the question, is there some other thing that I could do that would be more nourishing for that need? So a lot of times for me, when I fill my time with busyness, I'm trying to fill the need of feeling loved, right? And feeling worthy because there's a part of me that still feels like if I'm as productive as possible, then I will have earned my keep here on earth. And being productive actually doesn't help me feel loved. It's an illusion that I have that it's going to fill that need. What fills that need more is sitting down with a warm cup of like blackstrap molasses, believe it or not. That's like the most nourishing thing I could have. Or I could go to Dave and say, Dave, I could really use a hug right now. Or maybe I just need to go for a walk and separate myself from my computer where I've been sitting too long. Any of these things might be really nourishing for that part of myself that just wants to feel like loved and seen and heard. And being more busy, right? If I've been sitting at the computer for two hours, busying myself with like checking Facebook doesn't actually really meet the need that I have for like perhaps quietness or self attention or looking inside and giving myself love, right? It's still putting all of my attention out, 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 out. 
So what ends up happening after that is like, that didn't do it. So then I come up with some other busy thing to do. It's not really an effective strategy for meeting that need. So I'm going to bring it back to you. I want you to think about what drug of choice you have. Because I firmly believe we all have drugs of choice. I like to tell my clients we have drugs of choice that are politically correct, and we have drugs of choice that are politically incorrect, right? So we've decided as a society that crack, not politically correct, and that coffee, coffee's okay, right? But really, they're both just drugs that we use in order to cope with life or in order to try to meet some sort of need. So ask yourselves the question, would meditation help me right now? What am I believing right now that's making me behave this way? And the third thing you can ask is, what need do I have that I'm trying to meet with this drug of choice? And is there some other more nourishing way that I can meet that need? And if you're still dealing with all of this addiction stuff and you feel like you need help from an outsider in order to process it, in order to gain clarity, in order to create that space between your between stimulus and your response, I'm here. I'm available for coaching. And as I always say, my coaching services are 100% guaranteed because I want to make sure that you have fabulous results. Wishing you a beautiful day. Want to experience more vibrance, clarity, and joy in your life? Book a guaranteed session at hannamason.com slash joy.